Hi, what's going on everybody? My name's Jack and welcome to another Kit Guru review. In today's video, I'm taking a look at the Royal Clutch RK96, a 96% wireless mechanical gaming keyboard. This keyboard offers wired 2.4GHz wireless and Bluetooth connectivity options, as well as a fully hot swappable PCB. But what's even better is the price. This retails for around £64, which quite honestly feels a bit too good to be true, and in this video, we'll be finding out if it is. Starting off with the unboxing, the keyboard comes in a very basic black and orange box, and I have to admit that when I first saw this, my impressions weren't great. Now, I'm not somebody who tends to judge products by the packaging, but when you get this, you'll wonder if the keyboard is anything like how cheap and flimsy the packaging is. Luckily, it isn't. Opening the box up, the keyboard comes in this plastic wrap, and inside you'll get a keycap and switch puller, a 1.8 meter rubber USB Type-C to Type-A cable, and a few spare switches. You also get a plastic wrist rest included, which is alright, it has a matte finish and there's nothing particularly special about it. It attaches magnetically to the keyboard and the magnets are surprisingly strong. There's no branding on this whatsoever and turning it over you get four rubber pads to stop it moving on your desk. Now paired with the magnets, this feels really solid. Now comfort wise I don't know how comfortable this will really be long term because it is literally just a block of plastic. If you prefer your plush leatherette wrist rests then you may not like this, but some of you may find this useful. Now for some reason I didn't get a manual with my keyboard, but it didn't really matter too much, the keyboard's fairly straightforward and you can download the manual from the Royal Clutch website. Looking at the overall design of the keyboard, it's matte white, made mostly of plastic, and there's not a strong gamer aesthetic, which I like. It has a US ANSI layout, and as far as I'm aware, there's no UK ISO or other region available. This isn't really an issue for me, because I've been using US ANSI keyboards for a long time, but if you're someone who prefers UK ISO, then this keyboard won't be for you. The RK96 has a nice weight to it as well, it feels really sturdy and well made, and on my scales it weighs 946 grams. Not too heavy, but a comfortable weight for a keyboard. Although you can't see it immediately, there is a metal plate above the PCB, which I'm sure helps with the overall durability of the board, as there's virtually no flex at all when trying to bend it. Turning the keyboard over, you get four rubber feet, as well as rubber feet on the kickstands, and these are two-step adjustable, so you can have the keyboard at three different angles. And I've got to say, when I first got this keyboard and tried to flip out the feet, this was really difficult. I had to actually use a knife to like pry them open. Turns out, actually, what you need to do is flip out the smaller one first and then the bigger one, rather than trying to flip out the bigger one and the smaller one at the same time. This isn't really a huge issue though, because once you've flipped both feet out, then it's much easier to do. I think it's just stiff when you get it out of the box. At the top left, you'll find your 2.4 gigahertz dongle. There are two toggle switches on the back, one to turn the keyboard off and on, and this is basically just to turn it on for wireless mode, off would be for wired mode, and then another toggle to switch between Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz wireless modes. Finally, at the back of the keyboard, you have a USB-C port, but also two USB-2 pass-through ports. This is something that you don't really see in many keyboards anymore, so I'm glad that these are included. Although it is worth noting, because they're USB 2.0, you are limited to 480 megabits per second bandwidth speed. Not really a big problem. You can use this with a wired mouse headset or something like that, but I wouldn't really advise using it with an SSD or you know any kind of storage device that needs those faster speeds. It's also worth mentioning that these pass-through ports at the back only work when the keyboard's in wired mode. The first thing that really drew my attention when I got the RK96 out of the box was the dedicated mute button and volume roller on the top right. Now it's great that we have these, but they're so cheap feeling, which has to be expected from a budget board. The roller has virtually no feedback whatsoever, and it's so stiff to roll. Usually I like some resistance, but this is just way too much. Then you have the dedicated mute button, which is an odd choice anyway to include when they also have a mute button on the F10 key. And having duplicate keys is quite a common thing on this keyboard. For example, there's two print screen keys, two page up keys, and a few more duplicates as well. Anyway, back to the mute button. This has virtually zero tactility and has about one millimeter before actuation. Now this isn't such a bad thing. You can mute your PC really quickly if you want to. It just doesn't feel great. The RK96 also supports a number of functions, including a full row of media keys. And in the software, you can program every single key on this keyboard however you want, and I'll get to that later. The RK96 supports a number of different connectivity options, including wired, 2.4 GHz, wireless, and Bluetooth modes, giving you plenty of options when it comes to connecting devices, and I'm a big fan of these tri-mode boards. 
The keyboard works on both Windows and Mac, and there's even Win and Mac keys on the keyboard to switch between profiles. However, the keycaps themselves focus entirely on the Windows layout. There's no option key or command key or anything like that visible on the keyboard. When it comes to the wireless connectivity of this keyboard, I would always opt for the 2.4 GHz wireless mode, just because we get the full 1000 Hz polling rate compared to the 125 Hz on the Bluetooth mode. For gamers, the lower latency on the 2.4 GHz mode will be important, but if you're not gaming and you just want to use this keyboard for work, typing, then Bluetooth will be fine. And to be honest, I think for most casual games as well, Bluetooth wouldn't be an issue. When I first tested this in 2.4 GHz mode, there were a few issues some of the key presses just weren't registering at all, and there was some weird delay going on, like my computer was lagging. Turns out it's just the position of the dongle. This was completely fixed by using a USB extender. So what I did is I plugged the dongle into one end, plugged the USB cable provided into the other, and then connected it to my PC, and then brought the dongle closer to the keyboard. These little USB-C to type A converters are super cheap on Amazon, so you just pick one of these up. I recommend getting one if you're planning to use this keyboard in 2.4 GHz mode. It's a shame though that we don't get one of these included with the keyboard. So many wireless peripherals I've tested recently come with one of these, and I assume it's because manufacturers know that the closer we bring the dongle to the wireless product, the better the connection will be. As I said, once I got this set up, the difference was night and day. I would definitely recommend using one of these if you can. Battery life on the RK96 has been great from my usage. I've been using the keyboard in 2.4 GHz mode for the past three days, and the battery life has barely drained while I've been using it. This is helped by an automatic sleep function that you can set from within the software, and what that'll do is it'll turn the LEDs off after a certain amount of time of inactivity. This is really useful and definitely helps to prolong the battery life. Inside the RK96, you get a 3750 milliamp hour battery, which Royal Clutch claims will fast charge in around six to seven hours. Now, I don't really think six to seven hours is fast. I think that's actually quite a long time, but if you're planning to charge this up overnight, then this shouldn't be an issue. One thing I really like about this keyboard is the battery indicator. So if you hold FN and then hold down the enter key, keys one to zero will light up depending on how much battery life you have left. One obviously being 10% to 20% and so on. I wish all keyboards had this. It's such a great feature to have to just quickly see the battery life you have left. Taking a look at the keycaps on the RK96, these are made of ABS plastic and have double shot legends for added durability and feature a cherry style profile. These have a nice matte feel and don't feel cheap like most ABS plastic keycaps. I also found the overall finish of the keycaps a little bit hit and miss. Some of them have rough plastic cut marks, which in my opinion looks pretty terrible. This is something you can easily fix of course, but I'd rather the keys just be cut properly from the beginning. When it comes to typing and gaming, I found these to feel very comfortable, although this is helped by the switches. Backlight shine through is consistent across the whole board, no keys stand out as being odd or darker than the others, and the light in general is very bright on this keyboard. Overall, I'm impressed. Unfortunately though, there is no RGB on this keyboard, we just get this sort of ice blue color LED backlight. This may be a deal breaker for some of you who like to synchronize all of your peripherals. Honestly, I do think the lack of RGB is probably this keyboard's biggest weakness. So many peripherals out there now have RGB, and it's likely that you have an RGB mouse or an RGB light in your computer or whatever, so you're going to want to synchronize these. The fact that you can't is gonna be an issue for a lot of people, you're just stuck with this ice blue forever. But I think if you can look past that, or if RGB in general just doesn't really matter to you, then you'll get on fine with this keyboard. Although we do lack RGB customization, what the RK96 doesn't lack is a number of different lighting animations. There are 20 in total, which is pretty much insane. Most of these I would never use. I just prefer static or breathing, if I'm gonna use any kind of animation. And to cycle through them, just hold down the FN key and press the print screen key. Simple as that. The switches featured in the RK96 are Royal Kludge's own switches, and when you buy this on the Royal Kludge website, you can choose between RK Red, RK Blue, or RK Brown switches, depending on what you prefer. I have the RK Reds in here, which are basically cherry red clones. These linear red switches have an actuation force of 40 grams, a 2mm actuation point, 4mm of total travel, and a lifespan of 50 million key presses. They're also nice and quiet as well, which you'd expect from red switches. Overall, I found these switches to be fine. They're not as smooth as Gatoron Red or Cherry Red switches, and I have found them to be a little bit light when it comes to actuation force. You really don't need much pressure at all for the key presses to register on the PC, which some of you may like. The good news is, if you don't like the RK Reds included, you can always remove them entirely and use any other switch you like with a 3 and 5 pin connector, as the PCB is fully hot swappable. And as it's compatible with 3 and 5 pin switches, it does mean that you should be able to use roughly 98% of the switches on the market, giving you plenty of customization options with this board. The RK96 also features pre-lubed PCB mount stabilizers, and from my experience, these are actually pretty good. 
They help to reduce rattle and wobble from the bigger keys like the spacebar, enter and backspace key, and they're definitely doing their job because this keyboard is surprisingly quiet, especially compared to other keyboards I've tried recently, like the Corsair K70 RGB Pro and the NZXT Function, which are both pretty loud keyboards. This does also have two layers of foam, a five millimeter high density layer and a three millimeter bottom layer of foam to help dampen all of the sounds and key presses. Honestly, for a keyboard that costs 64 pounds, this is as close to silent as you're gonna get. There's also no pinging noises from the metal plate or anything like that when you bottom out the keys. Now this really surprised me because most of the keyboards I've tested recently from Corsair, NZXT all have this problem. In fact, here's a sound test between the Royal Kludge RK96, the Corsair K70 RGB Pro and the NZXT function. And then you can hear just how quiet the RK96 really is. Hopefully from those tests you can tell that the RK96 is the quietest of the three, with the NZXT and the Corsair keyboards having quite a lot of metallic ping and clanky sounding keys. The RK96 sounds great in comparison, and although it may not be the quietest keyboard out there, I'm sure you can mod it a little bit and make it even quieter. So the last thing to look at on this keyboard is the software, and you can get the RK keyboard software from Royal Kludge's website. This is currently only compatible with Windows, and you do have to use the keyboard in wired mode to use the different software options. So firstly, you have your profile settings, and from here you can create, rename, and add new profiles, as well as export different profiles. From the right-hand side here, you can also customize every single key on the keyboard and add various different functions to them. The next tab is for macros. Now, I don't tend to ever use these, but if you do, then you'll appreciate the option to create, edit, import, and export various macro options. Then you have two different tabs for lighting, which is a little bit confusing at first, but basically the first tab is to cycle through those 20 different animation modes. And here you can adjust the LED brightness and the sleep time that I mentioned earlier. And if you do click on an animation, you can also change the animation speed. The next tab then, these lighting options basically overwrite the previous ones, and here you can select custom keys to add various effects to. For example, you could just have the numbers and WASD lit up, or you can select any keys you want. Finally, you get the settings cog down here at the bottom left, and this menu basically lets you change the language, check auto run, which will launch the application at startup, reset the keyboard data, restore factory defaults, as well as update software and firmware. Overall, the software works exactly as it should, and I didn't have any issues with it being buggy or anything like that. So what do I think of the Royal Kludge RK96 keyboard then? Well, when I first got the box, I must admit, I was kind of like, oh no, this is gonna be a bad keyboard, just because the box itself was really not that great, but I was so wrong. The keyboard is a joy to use, the typing experience is overall pretty nice, and it's quiet, which is something that I can't say about a lot of keyboards I've tested recently. It's not quite as quiet, as the Everest 60, which is a keyboard I tested recently, but that is like insanely quiet. I've not tried a single keyboard that's as quiet as that yet, but this comes close. For 64 pounds, this keyboard is hard to ignore. There's a few things that could be improved, such as the keycaps being slightly jagged, and the fact that we only get one backlight color. It would be nice to see an RGB version of this keyboard, but other than that, this keyboard does a lot of things right for the price. And that's pretty much it for my review of the Royal Kludge RK96. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. It really helps out the Kit Guru channel. If you want to see more from us, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon as well, and you'll be notified when we upload another video. If you want to pick up one of these cool t-shirts, the merch links are in the description. Be sure to follow us on social media for the latest updates, and check us out on Patreon for some exclusive content. My name's Jack, you've been watching Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next one.